Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Florian. So I'm happy you are so patient um, because I'd like to introduce you to uh, our next speaker. Um, I just uh, learned from her that uh, three years ago she decided to uh, quit developing and go full to full-time leadership management. And uh, that's curious because three years ago I completely took the different approach and decided to be a full-time developer again. So, please welcome on stage Karina for her talk, Leading Leads in Tech. Thank you. Hi there. So you see the first uh, thing as a manager, you don't have the greatest uh, laptops anymore, right? <laughs> because I'm not a developer and my <coughs> laptop is a bit old school. So uh, the presenting mode is not as easy as with a great, new, perfect, tech-savvy laptop that you probably or some of you already have. So, leading leads in tech. I want to share some of my experience from growing to an engineer, to a lead, to a lead of leads, and um, yeah, share what I learned and share also some challenges that I still see. What I want to talk about is who am I? I also have one point, who are you? Just very short three questions, I want to know who sits in front of me, right? So we have a better conversation, so it's mostly me talking. My role, I want to give you a bit of an understanding how I'm currently working, so you also understand better the examples that I give then afterwards. And then the three like main topics I want to share with you, it's time and prioritization, trust and empowerment, which is super important, right? And then maker versus multiplier. So, who am I? I studied computer engineering at the Technical University here in Berlin. Why did I want to study computer engineering? Um, I wanted to, you know, like learn from bottom up everything that how a computer works, right? So, it was perfect. Um, we designed our own circuits, we soldered our own circuits, we then programmed the circuits. A lot of assembler and, you know, <laughs> very low. Um, uh, and then also uh, we uh, did uh, learn obviously also the high, high level programming like Java and C++, everything. Um, was definitely what I wanted to know. I understood everything from bottom up. And I did my master thesis actually in uh, medical, uh, developing a med medical simulation for ENT, ear, nose and throat surgery. Um, you can, man can imagine that, like, you know, for pilots, we have this great flight simulators, and for surgeons, we want to build more and more surgical simulators so they can train and learn how to do surgeries in a, on a simulator. That was amazing. I loved uh, working uh, very close to uh, surgeons and medical people. Um, after studies, I wanted to stay working with C++ because it somehow became my language uh, um, while studying, while writing the diploma thesis. And I started to um, work with a company in image recognition. Image recognition software in the way, like in the end of the production line, we had like our image recognition software systems and um, they decided is the product going out to be sold or is it actually sorted out because something is off. Like for example with a um, bottle, like the bottleneck is broken or like with uh, electronic circuits, you need to, you know, measure by micrometers whether they are correctly produced. So a lot of interesting stuff actually, I learned a lot also about different businesses there. After one year, I decided to leave, do something different. Um, I started to develop geomechanical simulations. So simulations again, I really like that uh, in my diploma thesis. Uh, but a different domain, geomechanics, so a lot about math, physics, geology, geomechanics. Um, uh, our software computed how rock breaks. So how do fractures grow in rock and um, how, how do the physics work, we know. An interesting example from that time, uh, you know, like you know, every country is always searching for new locations for radioactive waste disposals, right? Um, and they have this task, 
they need to prove that a waste disposal is safe for the next 100 million years. Uh, as you know, or as at least my geomechanical colleagues knew, uh, there will be three ice ages in the next 100 million years. So um, our simulation system actually needed to compute um, yeah, three ice ages. So there's like kilometers of weight of ice on the rock that needs to work right, and then the ice melts and then all this water goes through the rock and uh, changes the rock properties again. So super interesting, 10 years of my life. Um, again, C++. Then I uh, worked in a medical company again. I wanted to get closer to medicine again. Um, Java this time, <sighs> crazy change. Like Java was also always on the other side, right, as a C++ developer. And um, worked with bi biomedical data, clinical studies, um, again, super interesting. While I was working there, I met some founders of a startup, new, shiny, cool. Um, they wanted to build up a social platform where artists and uh, scientists meet. So the idea was that actually the artists get inspired by the scientists, but then again, the scientists get inspired by the artists by like, you know, like finding new ways for their research by seeing their work through the eyes of the artists. So, super crazy stuff. I met a lot of artists, scientists I already knew. <laughs> um, so, um, it was great working there. I built up a new team there again. Um, but the money wasn't really long enough, or not, not enough money for uh, what we wanted to achieve. And then two years, three months ago, I started working with um, Solaris as a fintech, again, super different domain. And um, my first job, not as an engineer, but as a lead, right? Uh, it was super different. I didn't write any, like, zero lines of code in the last two, two years, three months in this company, at least. A bit in the free time, but <laughs> not at work. And uh, I want to tell you a bit more about uh, my experiences there. Let's look at the time. Um, who I am outside work, and then enough about me. And I, after this slide, I want to hear a bit about you. Um, I have two kids, six and nine years old now. And actually, this image should be like way bigger. So most of my time when I'm not working, I actually spend with my kids. Um, sometimes, like very small time, I also spend in an organization that's called Femtech Alumni EV. Um, a lot of great tech women in leadership. Amazing, if you want to hear more about this, happy to share more. A bit investment in the health and sport, and you know, like not sitting all day long on just uh, in front of the computer, so a bit running, a bit sports, and then uh, the tiniest bit probably of my time is um, some evenings that I play piano, but it's more like once a month or something. So, over to you. Uh, in case someone has a mobile, please pick your mobile out of your pocket. Uh, scan this QR code, and I will also get my mobile because Slido, Slido is actually a great tool. But um, I need to switch the presentation um, from here to Slido. So everyone has their mobiles, hopefully, and scans the QR codes. It's only three questions, promise. Not much effort. So let's see whether I can actually... Ha! It's working. How big is your company? I would love to... Ooh, look. People are fast. Amazing. Digital natives everywhere. <laughs> so 1 to 20 uh, looks like the winner. Uh, 1 to 20 people. 34%. Most of you have voted, I think. Nice. Thank you. So, next question, what is your role? Is it more like an individual contributor? Are you like an engineer or architect? Or do you work as a team lead? Do you lead people? Or do you work as a lead of leads? Do you lead people who lead engineers? Individual contributor a lot, I expected that. But also a lot of team leads and even a lot of leads of leads. Interesting. <laughs> you, um, 
if you're a one-person organization, then uh, you're probably all of that at the same time, yes. Um, I can imagine. Cool, thank you so much. The last question is a bit needs a bit more brain power. I would love to understand for you what you think is the biggest challenge in leadership. Even if you're an individual contributor, you work with a lot of leads, you're also probably a lead in a technical sense, maybe not as a people lead. And uh, yeah, share one, two, three words. You can share multiple things. No one is sharing anything. Ah, trust. Trust is definitely something ego like its organization, keep up the motivation, find talent, feedback loop, hoo, hoo, hoo. communication, ooh, communication, ah, communication is the winner, <laughs> empathy, yes, change management, money, acceptance, trust the team, I like that one, setting boundaries, I have that also as a challenge, lead by example, Education, motivation, amazing. Keep up the motivation, it's also getting thicker. Motivate organization, people, trust. Cool, thank you so much. That were already the three questions I wanted to share with you or get your input. Let's see whether the Slido switcher lets me switch to the presentation again. Sometimes things are working, right? I don't have presenter notes, but uh, I do have Slido. Thank you so much for your input. So my current role, I uh, so above me, right? I report to the CIO of uh, Solaris. Also, also for your information, Solaris is like uh, between 800, 900 people. Um, so I have four team leads um, who report to me, how you say, right? Who I'm leading, and each of them has two or three teams. I still, you see down in the middle, I still have one team that I lead directly. Um, it's more like a historical context, right? For now, I don't want to like overlead, overload any of my leads with one more team. Um, yeah, and the teams work in different product groups. That's how we call them. You could call it uh, departments or units or it's like different products that they develop. And uh, ah, yeah, one more context, um, a team at Solaris, how does it look? I mean, it's looking different in every country, a uh, country, <laughs> company in every country maybe also, um, especially different in like one to 20 people, companies that uh, most of you work in. So we actually have a team of three to five engineers, um, senior, junior, professionals, everything. We have a product owner, like, a one product owner works only with one team, owns the product that the team develops, right? We have a staff engineer, a technical lead for this team, who's uh, still contributing, supporting the engineers in their like technical growth and um, also in like solving tasks, like pairing with them, growing them. And we have the engineering manager, which is a role that I started in, in Solaris, which is like a uh, team lead by the pure manager, right? And one engineering manager, as you saw before, uh, has multiple teams that they are working with, and the, engine the engineers report to the engineering manager, and the engineering manager is like, um, yeah, is the one responsible for for the for the team, right? In in all aspects. So, <laughs> my slides told me now is the time. Um, to have a good quote from someone important, someone famous. And I was actually starting to look into the internet. Okay, I need a good quote for leadership. And then I was searching and searching. And then uh, I, I, there are amazing quotes, right? There's a lot, of, a lot to learn uh, about uh, leadership in the internet. And, um, but then the next morning, uh, my son came <laughs> and he gave me the quote that I wanted to, sh to share with you. When I'm grown up, uh, I want to be a lead like you. I was like, uh, why, right? Uh, I, I wasn't sure what, why he said that, right? And so his uh, thoughts were very clear. Um, it's an easy job, right? The only thing that you do the whole day is talking. And um, he's right, right? The only thing I do the whole day is talking. So, and then he was like, yeah, I can already talk, so that's easy. And then <laughs> the second part is, like, he's, um, 
I have unlimited computer time, right? Amazing. For a nine-year-old, unlimited computer time, obviously amazing. So um, probably everyone would want to be a lead when they are grown up. I want to share a bit more what I'm talking about. This is my calendar from last week. You see uh, the time is from 8 to 6 p.m., so uh, this is my kind of working hours, right? You see also on the left um, timeline that is IST Indian Standard Time because part of my team is, uh, or some of my teammates sit in uh, India. Yeah, what do I want to share about my calendar? Uh, Google Calendar, super nice. You can color code your events, right? And you have this great time insights that I wanted to share with you. Um, so you can actually understand a bit better why you spend your time. And uh, I want to point out some things. So Tuesdays and Friday mornings, you see there's a, or the light blue is an out-of-office blocker. And um, this is my time where I need to go jogging. I want to go jogging, right? I want to spend this time there. And um, it didn't work before without the blocker because sometimes there was a meeting. It was an easy excuse for me. I don't need to go out in the rain and go jogging if I don't want to, right? I have a meeting. I can't do anything. So now I have a blocker. No excuse. Uh, another important thing for me is Mondays and Thursdays afternoons is for the kids, right? I have a blocker for the kids. Everyone knows in the company I'm not... I mean, I'm reachable in an like, urgent situation. Um, there are some people who have also my private number, but otherwise I'm out. You see, I still get some invites. Um, there are some white invites that I didn't accept. This time is for the kids. Um, besides that, I'm spending most of my time in one-on-ones. I do some tech leadership. I spend time in the different product groups, and I'm spending time with product and for hiring, right? So that was my overview. That's important, right? I just said, yeah, I need to here, I need to do there. Um, sometimes it feels I'm spending all my time in meetings. I don't, have, I don't have time to work, right? I don't have time to do anything. We do have time. I had a great coach some time ago, probably all of you know this, right? But still it's good to remind yourself again, we get 24 hours every day. It's a great present that we actually get, and we should use it, right? Um, if we only think about work time, we get eight hours every day, amazing. Eight hours, what can you do in eight hours? You can do a lot, right? So it's actually something that I do every day, right? I remind myself, we have all this great time, we can do all those great things. If someone says, oh, I don't have time, I don't have time. No, we do have time, we just need to prioritize. Prioritization is obviously easy. <laughs> Uh, no, it's not. Um, so, uh, probably also a lot of you, or maybe some of you, know this uh, importance urgency uh, matrix, right? Uh, there are topics that have high urgency and high importance. Easy. We just do them, right? There are topics, low urgency, low importance. Again, easy. Eliminate. Just don't do it. The not so easy parts are the ones where we have low urgency and high importance, like we need a tech strategy. We need to use AI in our company, right? Uh, like there are always topics where you need to do them, but they are, I mean, AI gets more urgent now, but uh, ChatGPT, everyone's um, there, right? Uh, the urgency is increasing, but there are always topics that are really important and that you really want to do, but they are not urgent, so probably you won't do them. This. Um, Nice picture here says we should schedule them. So for me, just scheduling didn't really help because then I have a reminder in my calendar that I move from every Friday to every Friday. And then sometimes I forget to move it and then it's out of my calendar, right? So what I um, do now is actually schedule with a person, for, with a person for whom they, this topic is also important. So I schedule the topic with a person for whom it's also important. If I'm in a meeting with a person for this important topic that doesn't have urgency, we will still start to work on it, right? Then there's this other strange thing, low importance, high urgency. Uh, I still spend too much time in those lower left bo uh, box, yeah? 
this image here says, let's delegate those topics, right? Um, we spend a lot of time in urgent, not, not important topics. I would even say, maybe we can eliminate some of them, right? Really think about the priorities, about the topics that you have on your schedule, on your to-do list, and um, eliminate as many as possible. But please talk about them. If there's someone waiting for your topic, but you eliminate it on your to-do list, tell them, this is not important for me, I will not do it. It's okay, we need to say no. So, how close do we need to be? Uh, if you started in your company as an individual contributor, right, and uh, then you're super close to the blossoms. Um, if you're growing to be a lead and then a lead of leads and um, your position changes, your role changes, you, you need to get farther away, right? But how far is close enough, far away enough? Um, trust. Um, when you, so for me, <laughs> um, I had, a, I had a, a course last year where the trainer told me, Karina, you know, you're a very controlling leader. So it's hard to hear that. Um, I want to be close, as close as possible, right? I, I want to, at least, uh, if possible, be there at the code. But you saw I have 11 teams that I'm working with. It's not possible. So what we need is trust. We need to trust our teams. We need to trust our leads. And we need to let them fly, right? It's similar to kids. You need to let them do their first steps and maybe not look, <laughs> because if they fall, but you can't hold that their hands until they are 20, right? So trust, let them go, let them fail. It's okay, support them to get up again, support them to, to do it again, right? Empowerment, give them the strength. We have a bit of time, right? Uh, give them the strength and um, support them uh, to, to be strong leads. Um, w one point that is important on this is um, make sure all the stakeholders know also that this person is the lead for the team, right? You're, you're not the lead anymore. Don't answer questions that actually your lead should answer. Don't, take, don't solve any topics that your lead should solve. It's important that we take this one step back and give the room to the people who are actually uh, should have the ownership. So only if you take the step back, people can sh start taking the ownership, right? People can start taking care of the things. Doesn't matter whether you're a senior engineer and you want to a junior engineer to step up, right? We need to give people space um, for them to take up the ownership. One more thing about space. I had one lead um, some time ago uh, where I got the feedback from an engineer. Mm, having them as a lead is actually as if not having a lead at all, right? And what I didn't do, actually, for a longer time, I didn't talk to anyone in the team. I only talked to the lead. So I have the rule now for myself, how often do I talk to whom, right? I needed to structure that in my head. I needed to structure that in my calendar. I'm talking to my leads every week. I'm talking to my direct team every second week at, in one-on-ones. But I'm also in the dailies and retros and everything. I'm also talking to my skip, skip level staff engineers, product owners. So the teams that don't directly report to me, I'm making sure that every week I get at least one small information, right? Like a pulse, pulse check. I know that everything is kind of okay. I don't get the information only from my team lead. Um, engineers from the team, some engineers still wanted to talk to me, so I, I have some, some things. What is important for me as a lead also, I want to grow my leads, I want to grow the engineers, right? Development dialogues, sh developing a way together how they want to grow. That's important for me. Twice a year I'm doing that. So, last part. Um, function of leadership is uh, to produce more leaders, not more followers, right? We, won't, we don't want to have more people who are um, following because that's actually not scalable, right? And uh, for us as engineers, scalability is a, is a huge thing. One more thing, I added a slide. I talked to Ole actually before this uh, um, call and I wanted to make sure that we also mention psychological safety. Why? 
I have a lead um, that, whom I talk to a lot of times, and for him it's like delivery is the most important thing, Karina. Delivery. We need to deliver. Yes, delivery is important, but how do you get to delivery, right? We need to have happy and healthy people. We need to have happy and healthy teams. And if we have happy and healthy people and happy and healthy teams, we will get delivery done. Yes, there might be some tooling issues, some process issues, but if you have the basis good, then delivery will come, right? Thanks, Ole, for this great conversation. And then um, second, last slide. Maker versus multiplier. I wanted to bring that again because I see a lot of my engineers actually uh, struggling with that and also their team leads. We were all makers. We might be still makers, right? But as soon as you start to grow into a senior engineer position, think about how to be a multiplier instead of a maker. Think about, uh, is it really a problem that I need to solve or is it actually a problem that someone else would learn from solving, and you can take, again, the step back, right? Support them, be there in case you're needed, but let them uh, be the maker and you be the multiplier, right? Um, Stack Overflow had a, uh, has this developer survey every year. You probably also know this, right? So the number of engineers uh, doubles every five years. Make sure we are scalable, right? Make sure we grow the engineers we need. Last slide, finally, um, a leader is best when people barely know he exists, or they exist, Lao Tzu was a different generation, right? Uh, know they exist, and when their work is done, their aim of is fulfilled, they will say we did it ourselves. It's a tough challenge. We as leads don't get the praise. We don't get the great satisfaction. Yes, we solved the greatest problem ever, right, as, that we had as engineers. It's a bit different, but... That's amazing. If the team is fine, if the delivery is fine, if, if everything is good, and the team thinks, yes, we did it ourselves, then you're the perfect lead. That's it. Thank you. And thanks also for the great slides uh, by Slides Go. You um, might have guessed it's a metal worker slides. And um, I really like the pictures and the free slides. Finished. Thank you very much, Karina. <laughs> We did get a couple of questions and we have a few minutes. Yeah. Ooh. So, <laughs> there is a question. Do you feel productive having so many meetings? Does it make you happy spending so much time in meetings? Yes. Very good question. In the beginning, I did not. I had this feeling a lot like, um, when can I do my work, right? I have meetings all day. I can't do my work. Uh, but I think, uh, actually, my work is meetings. My work is, there's a great talk by uh, Tanya Reilly, don't be the glue as an engineer, right? Um, glue work is actually what I think that leaders do, right? We, we glue everything where we see something is missing. You can only see where something is missing if you're talking to people. So the, the meetings is what makes my work, right? Okay. How has your prior experience as a developer helped or hindered you in leadership? Mm, helped a lot because I understand my engineers. I have now more team leads than engineers, but uh, still, right, I understand what are the problems. I could also ch challenge something. I can ask questions. Um, I know where the team struggle. I know, for example, what is important, right, I need to support the team when we talk about tech debt. Everyone knows tech debt, right? It's a tough discussion. We, have, we want to do product and feature development. And then again, we need to somehow make sure that actually our services are stable and great and we don't have too many incidents. So this is where I can support my team because I can strengthen the technical um, topics that we have in the team, actually, and um, bring or support a good discussion um, versus feature development. Okay, thank you. When do you take time to reflect and process the inputs from all those meetings? How important is reflection to you? Whew, now the big guns. Um, I could say I reflect when I... Um, 
lie next to my child in the evening <laughs> and wait for them to finally sleep, right? Um, it actually is a time where I, you know, like calm down and think about the day and think about the events that happen. Obviously, the right answer, reflection is super important. Without reflection, you can't learn, you can't grow. Do I take enough time for this? Probably not. But um, all of us wants to improve again and again, right? I'm not finished in my growth and my learning as a lead, and uh, I think that's definitely one of the parts to improve. Talking about further developing skills, there's a question. Do you have any recommendations for specific workshops or courses to take if someone wants to improve their leadership skills? Mm, I, the maker versus multiplier uh, image I took from Pat Kua. I follow Pat Kua since he was on Twitter and now he has this great newsletter. I think I got the 195th this week or something. So almost 200 newsletters. I really like his way of looking on engineering management and um, leadership. So he has also courses, maybe a bit expensive, I don't know. Um, but um, at least the, the newsletter is free and a lot of blog art articles that he mentions, I really think help to grow in leadership. And then there's a question for you as a female role model for maybe some developers or aspiring leaders here in the audience. What challenges did you experience as a female leader and how did you handle them? Mm, good question again. Um, is this still on camera? <laughs> yeah. You don't okay. have to be too specific. Just um, so I think uh, I had some challenges, I had some bad comments. Um, I think everyone, independent of the, of the gender, receives some strange comments that are not helpful, right? I had a, a comment in the beginning of my career from someone who meant, from a professor actually, who mentioned, yeah, I don't believe in your technical uh, abilities, right? And I, I was just finished as an engineer, right? I believed in my technical abilities, he did not, that shouldn't, be a problem for me, right? He wanted me as a technical assistant to organize his meetings, which was also super nice as a software engineer, right? Fresh problem with my diploma. No, I think uh, there are always people who see you or who make, you know, like think you are someone just because how you look, how you, where you're from, uh, what is your gender. Um, don't let yourself be, I don't know, influence too much, right? You are you, you know what you can do, what you can't do. Um, but uh, you also saw that I'm with a great uh, organization, Femtech Alumni V. So sometimes if you feel low, right, uh, get together in a group where you, where you get your strength, right? And uh, Femtech for me is something like this, great tech female leaders, right? So it's where also I get my strength. Thank you very much for sharing these insights with us and being an inspiring leader here on stage. Thank you. Thank you. And